Hi, can you give me advice? I'm a new Muslim, but I can't seem to pray five times a day. It's because it's been a year now, but does God really even care if I pray five times as long as I'm doing good, right? Hmm. Two things here. The, there are actually two statements which are two different problems in the question. The first problem is, Bismillah The first problem is, I can't pray five times a day. I can't do it. Now, I don't believe you. Whoever said I can't do it, I don't believe you. You know why? Uh, because I believe Allah. Now, I didn't say I believe in Allah. I said I believe Allah. There's a difference, right? I believe in Allah means I believe Allah exists. I believe in Him. But when I say I believe Allah, it means I believe what He says. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah does not burden anyone except unless they are able to carry that burden. This is what Allah said. Allah said He does not burden anyone with any responsibility unless they are capable of living up to that burden. This is what He said. You're saying you're not able to live up to a responsibility that Allah gave you. Isn't that true? You're saying, I can't pray five times. It's too much. And Allah is saying, yes you can. So I have a choice between believing you and believing Allah. And perhaps if you didn't realize this, maybe you're lying to yourself. Maybe you've convinced yourself because of your laziness, because of your lack of will, that you don't want to pray five times. Maybe you have to, I, I can't judge you. I don't know what the problem is. But the problem, maybe you're ashamed to pray in front of non-Muslims. You know, people can take 15 minute cigarette breaks at work. Right? They can, they can take a break and just go hang out, do whatever. You can't pray five times a day. Subhanallah, there, I mean, in this part of the world, where I used to, you know, when I used to work in New York City, I would see Muslims praying all over the place. In the middle of Fifth Avenue, on the curb, the guy is making salah, because it's time. Or, you know, at the, in, the, in, the, in the university, you open the copy machine room, in the library, and there's like three guys praying right there, making salah. Muslims will pray, if there's time, we're going to pray, that's it, we're going to pray. So there are no excuses. That would be the cops. <laughs> I'm going to stop. All right, okay. So that's the first thing. Allah said you can. If so, if Allah gave this burden upon you, and He did, in fact, then you can convince yourself of that and, and rely on Allah. He'll make it easy for you. The second question is: Does He really care? Does He even care if I pray or not? Now, this question is actually more about: Does He need my prayer or not? You're forgetting that the prayer isn't for Allah. It's for you. It's not for Allah. If all the people in the world, all they did with their life was pray to Allah, it would not make him any richer. Any, his, it wouldn't add to his kingdom because he already owns all of kingdom. And if no one mentioned Allah ever again, it doesn't diminish his dominion, his kingdom, his glory in any way. He doesn't need us. We need him. We need him. So the question is, do you feel like you need to pray? Do you feel like that's a need in your life? And if it's not, if you feel you're free of you know, begging Allah for his help, turning to Allah and submitting before His commandments, then that's a serious problem with your faith. It's become weak and this question only came up because you've been distanced from Allah for so long that shaitan can come to you and say, yeah, I know you used to feel bad about not praying, let's just get rid of that bad feeling and replace it with, well, why do I have to pray anyway? That's the next phase of that disease. The first part was at least, it was diagnosed, but at least you had some bad feeling. Guilt was still there. That's a gift from Allah. When that guilt even goes away and you say, ah, Allah doesn't need my prayer, it's all good. Why do I, so long as I'm doing good. And that's the last part I want to talk about, this so long as I'm doing good part. Who defines what's good? There, there are two kinds of good in this world. Please remember this, okay? There are two kinds of good. There's ethical good. I'm good to my neighbor. I'm honest at work. I'm nice to people. I don't steal. I don't cheat. You know, I'm... These are ethics. Basic ethics, right? That everybody... I, I tell the truth. I'm honest. I pay my taxes. Blah, blah, blah. These are ethical truths, okay? And I'm honest in business. Then there are religious goods. I go to Hajj, I give zakat, I pray five times a day, I fast in the month of Ramadan. These aren't ethical realities, these are religious goods. Good deeds that are religious and good deeds that are ethical, moral in nature. What happens a lot of times with Muslims and with non-Muslims, especially it happens with Muslims, is that we make a distinction between these two things. So in the Muslim world you will find people that are morally good. They're nice to their family, they take care of their kids, they're responsible in the household, they're nice to their neighbors, they're honest at work, good people. But guess what? No religion. 
I don't need religion to be good, is what they say. And on the other extreme, you have people that pray, go to Hajj, give zakah, have a long beard, dress in a very religious garment, and yet, terrible to their family, cheating people in business, highly immoral and unethical. So what's happened is we have separated the two dimensions of goodness. Moral goodness, ethical goodness, and religious goodness. What Allah does in the Quran is, fuses them together in the ayah, this one ayah, it's called Ayatul Birr, the ayah of goodness. What does it mean to be good? If you study that ayah, it is a combination of two things. It's a combination of ethical principles, like fulfilling your promises, being patient, perseverant, you know, and also religious goodness, establishing the prayer, giving the zakah, right? So it's, it's a combination of both of those things in one place. So if you think you are in a position to define what good is, most likely you're sticking to moral goodness. And you're undermining religious goodness, like the rituals that Allah taught us. But what Allah wants is for us to have both at the same time. This is when a person is truly good. Otherwise, you're not really good. You, are, you have defined goodness for yourself and you have rejected Allah's definition of it. But we turn to Allah for guidance because we can't define things for ourselves. We want Him to define them for us.